Hey there, it's David Mason. I'm really excited. I finally got to do a science experiment that I've wanted to do for years, and that was to record the modulated light from the Aurora Borealis and convert that into sound. Now, I did not use microphones. I did not use a radio receiver. I used an electron photomultiplier system with circuitry of my design to enhance sensitivity so that I could take extreme low levels of light variations and convert them into sound. And when I was anticipating what this sound would be like, I expected it to sound like white noise, pink noise, or, or the ocean. And to my surprise, it also has a chirping and whistling and chopping sound that sounds like just background noise, but it has these other characteristics added to it. And also, I have taken color night vision video of the Aurora Borealis, so uh, you can actually see the video of the Aurora as it's making the sound that's being recorded by taking its light and converting it into sound. So without further ado, here is the video and sound of the Aurora Borealis. This is my high gain electron photomultiplier system that I designed to work with a photomultiplier tube attached to my telescope. And the telescope was aimed at the Aurora Borealis and the light of that Aurora Borealis was super amplified and converted into sound. I also took video using a color night vision video camera and the sound was recorded on a Tascam DR701 sitting on top of my control console. So this is a live shot of my control console as it was recording the sound of the Aurora Borealis. Notice the high amplitudes on the oscilloscope display and then notice that the anode current is quite high and fluctuating as well as the cathode voltage was fluctuating indicating a high level of activity of fluctuation occurring with the Aurora Borealis. My first order of the analysis was to take the audio from the recorded Aurora Borealis and to run that audio into a Tektronix MDO34 high performance oscilloscope. And we can see on the oscilloscope display there is a great amount of amplitude variations due to the fluctuating light of the Aurora Borealis. But I also needed to do some other tests to verify the other signals that I was hearing. The next analysis was conducted by connecting the signal to an Agilent 35670 dynamic signal analyzer and I did an average sampling across the spectrum and found that there were perturbations within the frequency spectrum indicating changes in frequency of the Aurora Borealis. Since I'm also a musician, I was hearing sounds within that recording that were rather unusual and I determined that they were around one kilohertz. So I narrowed the frequency response and ran it into the Keysight uh, DSOX 3024T in a um, stored FFT mode. And we could see that there were variations in frequency response after an average sampling was done. So I knew we had something very interesting occurring within the recording of the Aurora Borealis. The next video clip of the Aurora Borealis will include bandpass filtered sound, which includes the chirps and whistles that I was hearing in the unfiltered uh, sound, and uh, it is a part of the phenomenon of the fluctuating light of the Aurora Borealis.
So there we have it, the sound of the aurora borealis through its modulated light being converted to sound. And that sound is unusual, but it is the result of protons and electrons ejected from the sun striking nitrogen and oxygen atoms and giving us these various colors. And then the Earth's magnetic fields give us these vortexes of curtains of light, which are really spectacular. And I'm really excited to be at the forefront of using this process to convert this modulated light into sound. Now, I'm going to have to get a bit more technical about the process because uh, people will have questions. I first started off by purchasing a broad spectrum photomultiplier tube, which covered 160 nanometers of ultraviolet to 850 nanometers of infrared. It also includes the visible spectrum. That photomultiplier tube was specified at 10 million gain, and every dynode stage, I used foil resistors to divide those dynode stages to keep the noise down, and then I decoupled every dynode stage with mylar and silver mica capacitors. And then the power supply section, I used extensive filter capacitor filtering to reduce noise. And the first stage is an LSK 170 JFET to start off amplifying that low level of light modulation into sound. And uh, it's really exciting to just be at the forefront of this and to be exploring something new. And I hope you enjoy this video and uh, I will continue to do research using the tools of my inventions uh, to make new discoveries. Now, some of you may know me from working in the TV series, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. I worked in several episodes with my inventions, including differential FLIR technology. And also, you may know me from the movie A Terror in the Sky with William Shatner, where I participated in science experiments using my inventions and technology. And I hope that uh, you'll enjoy this video as it continues. I'm going to play the remainder of the sound of the Aurora Borealis. And thanks for watching.